All right, guys. Uh, well, this is a really exciting privilege that Kim and I have. Uh, the next round of BOA is coming, and today we have with us on Roll or Die, uh, Sai Naji and Thiago Stefanuti, amazing uh, organizers of this event that the BJJ community really looks forward to. Thanks so much for being with us today, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> no stress, brother. So, jumping straight in, we won't make this as long as some of our other podcasts, so we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, so si, what's what's going to be different about this one? How's this one going to compare to the previous bowlers? Um, <clears throat> well, number one, the way it's going to be uh, different to the last bowl is there will be no James Rasko. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll remove uh, two and a half years of uh, PTSD from my life, which will be really good. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, the venue is different. Um, Tiago has been uh, come up with a couple of really good ideas as far as the team competitions and stuff. We're doing the contender series, which is um, for the sort of blue, purple, brown belts to have a daytime sort of event, similar to what I do with um, uh, Rebellion and Roots on Muay Thai shows. Um, so, yeah, the venue is going to be exciting. It's at the Melbourne Pavilion, which... Um, a lot of you guys would have gone to for uh, Hex and AFC and other fight shows. It's a really nice venue. Um, the card format's going to be different. And, um, yeah, and the rules, we've, we're sort of going back to pretty much the rules we started with, which was the IBJJF rules. But um, uh, I think we had, we had one modification before, whereas we don't have that anymore. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And Tiago, you've been working hard on bringing together all of the matches and there's a lot of matches. That's the first thing I noticed when I'm kind of scrolling through on the Super 8 Facebook page is just so many matches. Um, for you, what, what's, ex what's different about the match lineups this time or what are you excited about? What are you excited to see? What have you been, when you've been, I'm asking you a lot of questions, but whatever stands out to you. When you've been picking matches, what are you looking for? Talk a bit about that. Uh, matchmaking uh, looks like a, a easy work, but actually it's not so easy as it looks. Uh, you need to, um, firstly, to have good relationship with people, to contact people and um, make them happy with the the fights we are that you're organizing. So I'm trying to combine, as I, as I always did, try to combine styles and thinking uh, actually on the entertainment. Mm. So the main the main thing for us is to deliver to the public some some exciting uh, match to the people watching, you know. Yeah. So what I really looking for is try to get people with styles uh, that can um, actually attain the the expectations. Of the public and especially of uh, us, uh, Sai and I. So right. that's that's the, the way we do. And as usual, we try to do we try to give chance to every to the most of the clubs, the most important clubs in Melbourne and in Australia. We open the doors to many people, mm -hmm. as we did before. Like if you see, like Craig did the first uh, important show in Boa, same as Lachlan. Mm. Same as Burak, same as all big athletes in Australia. The the first big show they fought, it was Boa, and we keep going on that way, giving opportunities to other new talents to shine. Yeah, wow. I love that. That's awesome, man. That's brilliant. Yeah. Like a stepping stone. It's awesome. And so both, I mean, I guess for both of you guys, what are you the most excited about with these? What do What do you think? Uh, what are you waiting? You know, what's got you excited? Um, for me, I think the last time um, Tiago was only sort of a competitor, he didn't do the matchmaking on the last one, so it's nice for us to be working together again, mm -hmm. uh, like we did the first three times, which is really good. Um, I'm really excited about the uh, the the team on team tournament. Um, the quintet shows were quite exciting. Like our format's different, but also over. The most recent lockdown, the um, Judo World Championships were run in Hungary and they had the individuals and then they had the team competition. And that was really fun to watch. So um, 
it was actually around that time when the um, the Worlds were on when Tiago and I were talking and he said, look, how about we do a team competition in this one as well? Mm. And I know it kind of jumps across a few formats. We've got a Super 8, a team, and then Super Fights. But I think the the team format, especially the, the two teams involved being AET and um, Absolute, makes it really exciting. And then that's hopefully something we can keep going in, in future bowlers, uh, putting different teams against each other because there's a few obviously strong teams, but also, you know, the original idea we had was that it was going to be four teams and it was going to be a team championship, but we just couldn't sort of um, get that all happening at the same time. So that's going to be exciting. And also being at a, at another venue, I mean, for me, a lot of the promoting fun of it is using different spaces to do things. So we did the one at the national theater that was unique, the original two at Malvern with the Terradome thing. That was pretty fun. Um, Springvale was unique again because just the enormity of the mat space. Um, so, that, you know, for me, it's the the format and also the uh, the venue and working with this guy again. Can, so can you share anything about the team format or is that a bit of a secret until the day? No, so um, Tiago's, uh, we've got five brown balls from Absolute and five brown balls from AET. Um, Tiago can go more into the details of the weights and stuff, um, but we've got the team, so I'll, I'll be putting that up across the social. Um, so, yeah, Tiago can give you more details about that, but um, we're going with the standard rules for this show. We're not doing anything different. The no gear rules, I think we're using the well, – I think we are using the new rules, so heel hooks and stuff are in. So it's good to just have one rule set that's not chopping and changing. So last time we tried ADCC, that was a bit sort of hard to manage. Um, and this time around, I think we, we've made the right decision. Right. And Tiago, you look a lot more relaxed this time than previous bowers. Have been your student, my brother. I, um, I, you know, I've seen you go through some spaces. This, this is a challenging event to put on. What's different about the way that you're handling this process? What have you kind of over the, over the time, like how are you doing it different and better for yourself and, and as a result, better for the show this time? Uh, we, we get, we get more experience with the time. Yeah. So like, um, actually the first, the first boa was, uh, back on the days, like the shows in Jiu Jitsu in general, they, they were pretty new. Mm. Boa can be considered one of the first, um, uh, Jiu Jitsu shows in the world, actually. So like, uh, I believe like Metamoris and Copa Podio, but if you think about like, I think we, we pretty much, uh, one of the three. Mm. Uh, shows in the world that was like something pretty new to me. Sai has large experience on uh, promoting, so I I didn't come from that uh, background. Mm. So for him, is is just one more for me. It yeah. was like something a new it. world. But now, uh, actually, this this one actually is the most challenging one. We we not bring anyone from overseas. Yeah, we are it. working. We, we work with all the COVID uh, situation. And this is pretty challenging, actually. So you need to keep calm. Or, um, yeah, yeah. Like, we have to be working also always with plan B and C. So um, we, we've we been working very hard. But um, I believe, like, um, the, the, the jiu-jitsu, the Australian jiu-jitsu community, it's been growing up strong. Mm. And we have a lot of options in, in, in Australia right now. And I believe that, that that's another thing. You, you, you stay more calm. I'm pretty sure the quality uh, is high. And the, the, the fights we, 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 we match making, like, it's, they, they're going to be sick, you know. Like, you, can, you can expect that, like, some fights, they, 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 they're going to gonna be, like, amazing. I'm pretty sure. Everyone who paid the ticket or everyone who watch online, we're going to like that. I'm so excited for this, brother. Awesome. I think that's the other thing. It's like um, when people go into childbirth and the midwives and stuff say, don't use all your like high-end drugs at the start. I think we both know that with the, uh, with the cases and stuff in New South Wales and the border stuff, if we start stressing too early, we're going to have nothing left in the last week. When- <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. When so Tiago's it's good that we're recording now. Then. When Tiago's going to have to teach me a lot of jujitsu to jump in and <laughs> take his spot. And again, we have like... Sai versus Tiago for match yeah. four. And Sai versus Tiago for match yeah, five. It's going to be best of 48. Uh, and, um, so, yeah. Yeah. And coach, calm now. Can you go into anything about the team, the team's? Yeah, of course. Uh, yes. what, what do you want? What do you want to know? So, what's the format like? How, is it? Uh, why did you so choose the, brown belts? Like, yeah, go. Okay. The idea, the idea, the idea comes from actually um, that is two different formats of quintets, right? So, like, I'm following something like in Brazil happened for a long time. Brazil has a Brazilian nationals especially for, for quintets. I don't know if you guys, you know that, but no, no. like you have like the regular Brazilian nationals. What is the regular brackets? You put your name in, so you fight individually. And there is a separate competition that is Brazilian national for quintets, right? So we call Brazilian nationals for teams. Mm -hmm. So it is exactly the format we're doing, five in one side, five in another side, and we make the brackets exactly like we make in the regular brackets. So you pass through um, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, etc. Or how many, how many phases that has. Like you can you can have like five fights, five um, battles until the final. So we get we we number you can put like five A, B, C, D, E, F, or you can put one, two, three, four, five. So the fighter number one on uh, absolute we're gonna fight against the fighter number two from AET. And then the fighter number two fights against the number two, three against three, four against four, and five against five, of course. So the team that has three wins, we're gonna be the winner, right? So we have five fights, three wins, you win the, the, the competition. Uh, one thing we're gonna do, we decide to also if something happened and we have three victories straight away, like the, the one of the teams um, makes 3-0 straight away. We're going to keep the other two fights. And they're going to be like, um, of course, he can't change the result of the, the, the challenge. But at least the public can still have that as a super fight, as an entertainment. So I'm, I'm already putting on the head of the guys because every fight is unique fight. So they're going to fight not just for the team, but they're going to fight to... Uh, put a show up to the public as well. So everybody's going to be ready for that. This is brilliant. So we can wait for five exciting uh, fights against probably 10 of the best brown belts in the country. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so I, um, we are getting close to the end of this. One thing is you've given us the opportunity to interview as many BOA fighters as we can have on between now and the event. So super grateful for that. And we're going to invite them to come on individually or come on as pairs. So everybody should watch this space because hopefully we're going to get to interview quite a few. We'll see how we go, just based on time and coordination. But where can people buy tickets? How much is it to attend? What else do we need to know about? Are there any tickets left? Are there I any think tickets they're left? being pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously because of having the mat and sitting around it, like the, we we don't have like hundreds and hundreds of tickets. So the tickets are limited. Mm -hmm. They've been selling quite well. So the front row and the next couple of rows have pretty much sold out. Um, but there is tickets left to buy. Um, there's a, the website's being rebuilt, but there's a link in the Instagram page and I'll post it on our Facebook page as well. Okay. Um, but that'll all be updated on boasuper8.com. Um, the live stream will be uh, there as well. So it won't be through any other platforms. It'll be produced like before. It's going to be a high quality stream. Um, if the event is sold out in Victoria, we'll open up the live stream to Melbourne as well. But if it's obviously like still tickets left the live stream will be won't be available here um but yeah jump on um but one thing we want to make sure guys do is um the athletes especially the guys in melbourne's ha have their own unique link so mm -hmm. if you follow their link not the one on our instagram um it sort of their their ticket sales that's attributed to them sort of gets tracked a bit and then we, you know they they receive some money from that too so it's just a little bit of a uh, little way of giving those guys a little bit more as well um but yeah, so let's see how this one goes. I think we'll we'll get a good turnout. Um, there's a range of tickets there. Like I said, the, the main ones are sold out, 
but plenty of good spots left. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll make a nice big su successful comeback and uh, it becomes something we don't have every three years, which we've had over the last six years. It's been almost an Olympic cycle. So yeah. um, <laughs> this one going well, and you know, we've got some issues we're going to have to deal with, with like border closure and stuff, but we we're already on it. Mm. Um, but yeah, hopefully it becomes a much more regular thing. That's great. And of course, when we, whenever we do a podcast or a little mini segment, we'll put their specific link under their podcast as well so that we'll get more exposure for that competitor. For their yeah. tickets. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Ento. Yes, brother. Can I, can I just put something up here uh, that's like about information for the public? Um, so yeah. I already um, said something about, but uh, would you like to leave some things clear here uh, for who is going to be watching? Hmm. Firstly, like uh, as I said, we're going to follow the IBGF rules. We try to make that um, as simple as you can. You don't create any um, misunderstanding on the rules and actually for the public know what they're watching. Hmm. Um, the super fights, they are uh, on six minutes format following hmm. the IBGF rules. And we're going to use the new IBGF no gi rules for all no gi matches. Mm. So, also on the contenders, we're going the purple belts. They're going to be using uh, the, the, the matches they are uh, booked for no gi. They're going to be using the brown and black belt IBGF rules. So, they're going to the purple belts, they're going to be fighting on the heel hooks as well. On Ogi. And blue belts, we're going to use the blue belt rules. So, all the super fights, uh, contender or um, main card, the BOA main card, we're going to use six minutes rounds. Mm -hmm. So on BOA, uh, on the Super 8, we're going to use the 10 minutes format, exactly the same as IBGF. Right. And on the challenge, we're going to follow the eight minutes with the gi, IBGF GI rules. So um, how would you like to ask the public as well to keep the, their eyes open and give the opinion of what the match they are expecting more? I have my personal picks. I will keep with me. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I have some ones here in my mind. They're going to be fire, man. So thank you very much for uh, the time and for the space. Thank yeah, you. And so thank much. you, guys, for uh, putting this fantastic show on for Australian Jiu-Jitsu. As you said, it has been a while. But, yeah, we're all excited. I think the public's excited. So, yeah, boa. Yeah. Everybody, thank you. Thank you, especially for Cypher, for giving me the opportunity to matchmaking again. I love that. I see you guys soon. Absolutely. I mean, without Sai and Tiago, we wouldn't necessarily be able to uncover in a big space who the next Craig Jones is or, you know, these big fighters who get to go overseas and really put Australia on, you know, on the world stage. This show has been such a huge part of that. And thanks again, guys. You rock. And we'll hopefully get to talk to you more even between now and the event. We'll see how we go. All the best. Talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Bye. Bye. Bye.